Hello and welcome to the studios of Missouri Western State University. I'm Dr. Robert Nolf and I'm sitting here with Caitlin Cannon, a senior in our Convergent Media program and executive producer of our new digital media show here at the university. 20 years ago this month, I pulled together a group of communication students and began an opening season for a new student produced magazine show called Western Weekly. Welcome to Western Weekly. I'm Colleen Williams. And I'm Brian Butler. Before we start the program, I would like to ask our technical director to switch to camera two and show you our studio. We would like to thank WDAF Channel 4 in Kansas City for donating this set to Missouri Western. We would also like to thank the Missouri Western Foundation for the funding of the equipment used in the studio and control room and St. Joseph Cablevision for giving us the opportunity to bring this program to you. On Western Weekly, we will take a look at important stories from the past week. We will highlight major events that will be coming to the college in the near future. In our feature section, we will introduce faculty and students that are making a positive impact on Missouri Western. This feature will be called Faculty Focus and Student Spotlight. And finally, we will provide a calendar of events that will keep you up to date with meetings, special events, and sports at Missouri Western. And now for our top story. Preparations are underway for the second annual convocation on critical issues. Dr. Jean Kirkpatrick, former United States Ambassador to the United Nations, will be this year's keynote speaker. The convocation will be presented free of charge and open to the general public this Tuesday at 9.30 a.m. in the Missouri Western State College Fieldhouse. Dr. Kirkpatrick served on the National Security Council. Under President Ronald Reagan, she was the first woman to serve on a presidential cabinet. Every other week, our program will include a feature called Faculty Focus or Student Spotlight. This week, our faculty focus will be Dr. Frank Kessler, Professor of Political Science here at Missouri Western. I recently talked with Dr. Kessler about his career at Missouri Western. Well, I've been at Missouri Western 20 years, and I started out uh, when the buildings were here just about and uh, taught political science and uh, most of the areas of interest have been presidency, foreign policy, uh, parties and elections and things of that sort. Given all the events in Haiti, are you excited to have the opportunity to discuss U.S. foreign policies with a former United Nations ambassador like Jean Kirkpatrick? I think it's really a neat opportunity we have that we're bringing somebody in uh, in this convocation type of arrangement that otherwise we wouldn't be able to, to probably have come to St. Joseph. In the last convocation that we had, we had Arthur Schlesinger, Jr., who was recognized for his involvement in the, both the Kennedy and the, and the Johnson administration's Pulitzer Prize winner, all kinds of wonderful things about him. And to follow up with uh, some of the stature of Gene Kirkpatrick is really a remarkable accomplishment for the school and for the community. As a special treat, my original host of the show, Colleen Williams, has sent us a short message from her anchor desk at KHGI-TV in Hastings, Nebraska. How can it be 20 years? I still remember auditioning for Western Weekly. I'd never been on camera before, but I thought it looked like fun. I ended up getting the job and became the first anchor for Western Weekly. 20 years later, I am still a news anchor. I worked for KQ2 and then KTVO in Kirksville, and eventually worked my way up to network reporting for CBS in New York. I'm now back in the Midwest. My husband and I moved back to his hometown of Hastings, Nebraska to raise a family, and I'm now anchoring the nightly news for NTV. You have every chance to succeed at Missouri Western. It is just up to you to take advantage of the opportunities. And I wish you all the best of luck. Send me your tape. I'd love to see it. We're always looking for reporters here, and there's nothing I'd like more than to help out a fellow Missouri Western alumni. Thank you, Colleen. Western Weekly lasted well into the new century, but eventually was canceled. Well, this semester, with a renewed interest in digital media and a need for a practical outlet for our students, we are once again offering the Missouri Western viewing audience a revised version of Western Weekly titled Griffin Update. 
Griffin Update is our student-produced digital magazine show bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. During each of the programs, the students will present an in-depth look at the people, places, and events that make Missouri Western and the Northwest region of Missouri a great place to call home. And now, without further delay, welcome to the pilot edition of Griffin Update with our hosts, Narissa Lee and Thomas Delgado. Welcome to the first edition of Griffin Update. As Caitlin explained, we will be bringing you news, sports, and information from Missouri Western State University and the surrounding region. We will go out of our way to feature the people, events, and places that are of interest to our regional community. We'll also work to find those hidden gems and stories that help make Missouri Western and the surrounding region a special place to go to school and call home. To begin our show, reporter Taylor Allen takes a peek behind the scenes of the successful first theater production of the semester, John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. The fight looks real, but in reality, these student actors are working on Missouri Western State University's production of John Steinbeck's Of Mice and Men. Students have worked for weeks on the project and are finally getting to perform for the community. That work has included practices, line meetings, and hours of makeup preparation. Dallas Henry, director of the production, said that he is impressed with the amount of work students put into the show. They've done great. I mean, we spent a lot of weeks uh, doing table work and really uh, knowing what they, the actors needed to know what they were saying before we started getting on stage. And so there was a long process of that. By the time we got on their feet, they really knew what they were saying and it just kind of came together. Other important aspects of the show are the lighting and set design. Jeff Stover, technical director of the show, also worked as the lighting and set designer. Stover said he had a good but strenuous experience creating the set. Uh, it was a huge collaborative process with uh, Professor Henry. He and I did our separate research and we came together and we had a long meeting where we looked at pictures of barns and bunkhouses and stuff from the era and then talked about how to translate that onto the stage. We also uh, talked about a lot of the, the texture and the symbolism of the show. Um, if you see the show, you'll notice that there's sand, there's straw, there's rough hewn wood, there's erosion cloth, there's corrugated metal, there's a lot of different textures in the show. Um, but we also talked about wanting really high walls for the show so that the guys are actually sort of like mice, but they look smaller by having large set, and this is actually the largest set I've ever designed and built. So. Stover said the lighting design was another good experience. I'm a professional lighting designer, so the lighting is actually quite easy for me. Um, again, Dallas and I had a lot of talks, and we had a lot of uh, the pictures that we looked at um, for references, for ideas, for the lighting moments in the show. And we discussed a few scenes that he wanted a certain look, and I like that idea. Fortunately, being the set designer and the lighting designer, it gave me the opportunity to kind of um, work the set in a way that my lighting would look more dramatic. Chris Rail worked as the sound designer for Of Mice and Men. He said he has loved the job. It's been amazing. Um, it's been a learning experience. It's the first show I've ever sound designed before, and so Dallas has worked pretty closely with me on learning how to work all the different aspects, and it's stressful too at the same time because a lot of the play runs off the sound cues for the play. So if I miss my cue, the actors miss their cue. So this has been a very very fun but stressful and exciting thing at the same time. Ronald Baker, who plays the character Crooks in the show, said he is glad to be doing a drama rather than a comedy this time around. It feels good to do a drama now. I mean, a comedy, comedy is great. I'm a goofball all day, but this feels good to do a drama because you, you have to go places within your character where you probably never go before. So it's just like a deep connection you have to go with it. So. Riley Baer, a senior theater and cinema student who plays Lenny Small, the main character, said the small cast has been fantastic to work with. And what's really cool about this show is actually, uh, is since it is a small cast, you are able to have intimate moments with each actor and get to know each niche. Bear said that he has dreamed of playing Lenny ever since he read the play. While acting, he concentrates on really becoming the character. 
Lenny's not really uh, talkative around the first act. So basically, I'm sitting in a bunk. I have to know what's he thinking in that current moment right now. So is he just touching things off on the bunk or is he paying attention to whatever Candy's story is and just stuff like that. Bayer said he is excited to be leaving the Western Theater program in good hands. Ron, Steve, and I, we are the kind of veterans of Missouri Western, and really, we've had a, like a lot of freshmen and just uh, non-traditional students come, and we have an alumni, Andy, who come, and it's, it's so cool getting to see all these new faces and how talented we are, they are, and yeah, it, it's, it's really comforting that we, we are getting a new set of talent coming into here. Baker thinks that students and community members who see the show will definitely feel strong emotions. It's going to be a tearjerker. I promise you that. This is, you have to stay. I'm not going to spoil anything. You just have to stay. It's going to, it's going to hit you. It's going to hit you the heart. That's what it is. Stover said he is excited about the production and looks forward to the rest of the year. I'm just uh, really proud of the show. I'm really proud of the work that the actors are doing, the crew. Um, it's probably. I know I've only been here for a year, but it's probably one of the best shows that I've seen here, and I'm hoping that this is um, a step up to a higher level of production value for us here at Missouri Western. Of Mice and Men has been a hit since it opened on Friday, October 3rd, and the crew hopes to produce many more successful productions throughout the year. The department is planning to produce three other shows this year, Pirates of Penzance, Three Days of Rain, and You're in Town. Speaking of Potter Hall, students arrived this semester to find many renovations to Missouri Western's campus. From additions to the Walter Cronkite Memorial to the construction going on in Potter Hall, many of the renovations on campus are receiving much attention. Reporter Daniel Cobb brings us this fall's latest. Missouri Western is starting to look different. Everywhere you turn, there seems to be something new going on. Western is currently undergoing numerous renovations in order to keep the campus more accessible to students and guests alike. For example, Western has given a facelift to Papa Wells Dining Area, renaming it to the POD Market, where students can buy an assortment of food in between classes. Students can also go to Blum to find both The Walk, a new Chinese restaurant, and also a subway, with the latter gaining much popularity as the semester goes on. Additions are also being made to the Walter Cronkite Memorial, with an actual representation of CBS's studio coming in the near future. The yearbook office, which was originally located in Eater Hall, is now on the second floor of Murphy Hall, with a few new amenities. Meanwhile, Eater received a new computer lab, which is doubling as a classroom for students in various editing classes. Dr. Kale Fessler, the Vice President of Financial Affairs, is very proud of the work that has been done regarding Eater's new workspace. We did have to institute some fees to help cover some of those costs because with the, the number and power of those machines, uh, which our students need, frankly, I mean, to, to be able to do the work they need to do from journalism, desktop publish, I mean, all, all across the board, uh, they need that kind of equipment there, and so uh, we were very pleased to be able to do that. But by far, the biggest addition to campus, at the moment, is Potter Hall's new building, as well as a roundabout being built just outside. The new percussion building will replace the double-wide trailer that percussionists have been using for quite some time now. Dr. Bob Willenbrink, the Dean of Fine Arts at Western, is excited for the renovations currently taking place in Potter. From a personal standpoint, the renovations in Potter Hall are much needed and very welcome. We have the new restrooms, which will help all the public performances. We have the new percussion studio going in, which will give us additional space and get rid of the double-wide that's been housing the percussion area for many years. And also there's a circle drive, which will be very beneficial because people will be able to come up, purchase tickets, and leave short-term parking, and they'll also be able to drop off individuals that they'd have a hard time walking from the parking lot. But that's not all. According to Willenbrink, smaller renovations around campus are just as important. There's also been changes and uh, additions to Wilson Hall, some renovation there, which will make that facility better. All those changes are really outstanding changes that will really, really help us. All of these minor tweaks, including painting some of the older classrooms and railings on campus, it's all in an effort to improve the general look of Missouri Western while the other, larger additions make it more accessible to students of various majors and interests. Students are already making use of the new services on campus, and it won't be long until some of the larger renovations get the same treatment. 
Smaller renovations on campus, such as new power-saving light bulbs and street lamps, are also being made. Though Potter Hall's initial renovations are nearing completion, more construction is in the planning phase pending the Centennial Capital Campaign. When we come back, we will take an exciting look into the future of other changes on the Missouri Western campus. The average text takes your eyes off the road for nearly five seconds. Welcome back. Many new renovations are underway on campus. Missouri Western continues to grow and change. Recently, the university received some good news that could lead us to more expansion coming in the future. Caitlin Cannon reports. At over 700 acres, Missouri Western owns the most land of any university in Missouri. But until recently, the university had to get approval from the state to develop the land. Special Assistant to the President, Ann Pierce, explains. If we wanted to do anything with land on university campuses, we had to go to the General Assembly mm -hmm. and have someone to sponsor a bill for us, and it would have to receive the approval of the General Assembly mm -hmm. and go to the governor for his signature. Mm -hmm. Well, needless to say, that was um, a long, drawn out <laughs> process. And sometimes if you want, for instance, to lease some land, you have someone right away who wants to lease the land and, and get moving on the project, and that was just impossible. The empty fields surrounding the university's campus could soon host more than hay bales. One possible expansion is a research park across from the Kit Bond Incubator. We've set aside 26 acres right next to the Kit Bond Incubator for that incubator to expand and for startup companies, once they're beyond the startup phase, to actually develop and become a going concern in this community. So that's you know, part of the mix, that uh, we now have some freedom over that land to, to look to the next step of the Kipon Incubator. Other additions may include more campus dining options. Student Government Association President Daniel Hager is currently on a subcommittee to determine what businesses can come to campus. Uh, we could lease some land over on West Campus towards the incubator to having some restaurants even, possibly, that students can participate in. Um, and it would increase revenues here on campus and it would also encourage more um, of a social atmosphere on campus as well. Um, Hager would like students to tell him what they would like to see at Western. So there's, there's a lot of different ways you guys can voice your opinions and even one of the best ways is just, just literally come up to my office and come talk to me. Although the land lease bill will mean new developments on campus, for now, Western is solely in the planning stage. Missouri Western will start seriously considering expansion options after recommendations from the master planners later this month. Keep an eye on the farmland that surrounds the campus. As Bob Dylan most famously said, the times they are a changin'. Change has also come to some of the programs at Missouri Western. The Craig School of Business has also introduced a new degree program for graduates majoring in business. Mason Marshall reports. This semester, Missouri Western's Craig School of Business introduced a new master's degree. It's called the Information Management and Enterprise Resource Planning Concentration. The degree prepares graduates to work in all areas of a company, from management to analytics. In the degree program, they use the Systems, Applications, and Products program, or the SAP. This enterprise resource planning software is used by companies all over the world, including St. Joseph's own Boehringer. The Hilliard Cleaning Supply Company is also one of the main businesses that uses the SAP program in St. Joseph, Missouri. The SAP, or Systems, Applications, and Products in Data Processing, is a European multinational software corporation that makes enterprise software to manage business operations and customer relations. SAP is headquartered in Waldorf, Baden-Württemberg, Germany, with regional offices around the world. 
The company's best-known software part products are its enterprise resource planning application systems and management. The degree itself is a 30-credit hour program that includes a core of 18 hours and 12 hours of electives to fit the specific needs of the student, and most classes are offered after 5 p.m. In addition to SAP software, business simulations with SAP will be utilized in several of the classes. Dr. Peggy Lane is the program director and thinks that the program is working really well. The program was approved last spring and this is the first class this fall. That we have seven students in the program, which is fantastic. Uh, we were hoping we would have five, so we have seven students in the, in the brand new program and we have a few more on board for coming in in the spring. Dustin Daffron is a student in the new degree and is enjoying it so far. I joined the program because it was recommended to me by one of the professors and when I looked into it a little bit more it, uh, it seemed kind of new and exciting and uh, fits in well with my interests and my current uh, work experience. The required courses for this program include ERP Fundamentals, ERP Configuration, Systems Development Lifecycle Analysis and Design, Business Intelligence and Analytics, Supply Chain and Customer Relationship Management, and SDLC Project Management. Elective courses include Strategic Information Systems, Enterprise Applications Technology, E-Commerce and Mobile Platforms, and SAP TERP-10 certification. Dr. Mark Lewis is also a professor in the current program and is teaching students how to utilize the different techniques in business. The kind of classes that I teach in this new graduate program are systems analysis and design and business intelligence. Those are two different classes. Systems analysis deals with the tools and techniques and information needed to design the systems that businesses use. And the business intelligence gathers and analyzes and reports on those data that we have collected so that we can make data-driven business decisions. The ERP concentration degree has given graduates a better opportunity for a successful career in business. For more information on the ERP concentration degree, students can go to the Craig School of Business office located in Papawell Hall 305. We'll be right back. Western, there are many students who either over the age of 25 or drive further than 25 miles each day to get here. These students are classified as non-traditional or non-trad students. Western has given them a home away from home on campus. Reporter Andy Garrison visited this intrepid group of students. Every morning from every corner of Northwest Missouri, many of what Missouri Western considers non-traditional students wake up, take care of their families, and begin to bust themselves into school. To qualify as a non-traditional student, a student just needs to fall into one of two categories. Uh, a non-traditional student is considered 25 or over. Um, a commuter is anyone that has to drive to campus. So. Missouri Western has a home for non-trads and the non-traditional commuter student center, a place that provides not only support, but also a community. They also just give you a place to study. I mean, uh, they have a writer's workshop type stuff they do. They have uh, just co coffee and conversation. People come in of a morning, like they do it, I think, once every two weeks. People come in, they have little breakfast areas and coffee, people talk. The Nonstrad Center also provides a place for students who may not have internet access at home to catch up on their homework. Although the center doesn't offer tutoring in the traditional sense, program assistant Yasella Moore does say that they offer assistance with things like Moodle. For instance, um, earlier today I had a non-trad student come in, um, asked about Moodle support services and such type. Um, we did run a Moodle seminar earlier this semester. Um, however, we're going to do it again next semester just because that's something that you know we've been asked about. 
So that's part of our program is to assist these non-trad students. The center also has tremendous support for military veterans. They also have several events throughout the course of the year, usually put on by volunteers who are non-traditional students themselves. Um, it varies. It really does. It depends on the time of year. Um, we also, you know, offer that uh, vehicle um, option as well during the spring because, you know, uh, winter's hard on batteries and a lot of times we don't realize how, you know, bad shape our vehicle is in. So we try to do that both in both the fall and the spring. The center also has several ways in which they can help students financially. In, at the beginning of the year they have different uh, little book, what is it, the Judah Book Fund and other types of ways that will help you get money for certain things, you know. I mean, just a simple application is all it takes, fill it out. In addition to that, the center also provides a television, a refrigerator, a microwave, and a coffee maker. Even though there's only two categories you can fall into to be a non-traditional student, the center opens its doors to everyone. I mean, it's not like we discriminate against any one individual. If you're here and you need something, you walk in here, we're going to help you out. So, I mean, there's no real qualification to be a non-traditional student, um, essentially, other than you know, according to the paperwork, it says over 25, but, you know, I see 22-year-olds that, you know, they got out of high school and, you know, they went to work and now they've decided, oh my, I need to get into college. So that's kind of a non-traditional role as well. With all of its resources and its sense of community, the non-trad office will be a top destination for non-trad students at Missouri Western for years to come. For more information, call the Non-Traditional and Commuter Student Center at 816 271-4281 or stop by their office in Eater Hall 200 Monday through Friday 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Did you know Missouri Western has beat the national average and actually gained students this year? The number of high school graduates in Missouri is slightly lower this year, yet Missouri Western has put all the right elements together to achieve a higher enrollment for the 2014 fall semester. Producer Krista Haig and Victoria Higgs take a look behind the scenes at this fall's successful recruiting class. This year, Missouri Western has seen an increase in enrollment with about a 3 to 4 percent increase in student population, as well as retention rate improving the campus is growing tremendously. We have had an increase in our enrollment, which has been wonderful. It has also helped with our retention rate, which has gone up as well. I would say a couple of key factors as to why it has gone up is we have worked very closely with marketing and PR to make sure that all of the photos that we are putting out, all of the emails that we are putting out, the postcards, you know, are, are all the same messaging. And we did get to roll out a new marketing, which is everything is possible. From here, everything is possible. I would also say within the past year, Missouri Western has been more visible. Just making sure that anytime a visitor comes on campus, that they know that they're the only person that we're talking to and to see if this is a fit for them. With the student enrollment increasing, it has left residential life and housing preparing and planning ahead for future growth. I will say in residence halls, they are a little overflowed and then trying to make a waiting list. So it's a good problem to have and, you know, talking about how we can, you know, make some of our single rooms into double rooms or how can we be prepared for this growth for next year if it does continue. Since student population has grown, the residential halls on campus are fuller than usual. At the beginning of last year, I believe we opened at about 1,220 store city, uh, about the 80 plus students uh, more than last year but we're sitting at a very healthy uh, 1300 right now which uh, is a great great position to be in because it's you know, about as full as, as you uh, you want to be you want to have a little bit of room to, to move students around should you need to if you have a facilities issue or a roommate problem um, but definitely full that you're you're producing a lot of great revenue and having a, a very dynamic um, environment on campus Currently, here in the suites, that all the rooms have two beds each. So uh, there's an opportunity that you could say, 
uh, designate certain rooms to have six people in the suite instead of four people in the suite. So uh, not to, to not overload a bathroom as much as possible, what you would do is you've got A, B, C, and D in a room. So the A room and the C room would have two people in it, and then the B room and the D room would only have one. So you've got three people sharing a bathroom. So that's, that's one option. You wouldn't want to get to this position, but there is you could also restrict the amount of returning students coming back um, and say that uh, I've worked at a university before where there's a lottery system so that you said you're going to have, uh, well, just, just for an arbitrary number, 500 returning students you're going to allow to live on campus. And so you do a, a lottery system where they won the lottery, they got to sign up for housing, or you do a priority system where students that had lived with housing longer had, a, had the priority first to sign up, and then if they chose not to, then that priority would go to the next person down the list. It'd be nice to have a, a different type of housing option, whether it's you know family graduate housing, um, or whether it's a purely freshman housing that's more of a like a modified traditional type of hall where maybe you have a community bathroom but you have your own private room or uh, those types of things that so the building trends around the nation are going from the suite style where you have the, have your own bathroom to that modified uh, traditional but those types of things are options as well um, I think we'll probably see what those projections are like from uh, admissions and then make a determination here later in this semester. We would notify all of our current students um, that we would be changing that policy if it ever got to that point. Living on campus is not only affordable, but also benefits students from commuting every day. The only other university that I was really like thinking about going to, I had to drive everywhere and it was like $400 a month for parking and stuff like that and it was like $40,000 a year. so. So I chose to go here. As student growth here at Missouri Western continues to rise, not only residential life, but the admissions have a positive outlook on what the future holds. This is a, this is a great time to, to be at Missouri Western. I think this, uh, this, this university has a lot of, of room to grow and a lot of raw potential. And I think it's got the, the administration here now that really wants to take it that direction. For more information or questions about living on campus, contact Residential Life at 816-383-7100 or stop by the Commons Building located near the suites. Have you visited the Walter Cronkite Memorial? I have indeed. I actually checked out their one-act performance and also I always review the same stories whenever I go into Sprout. The Walter Cronkite Memorial in Sprout Hall contains an impressive amount of information spanning nearly 100 years of history. To complement the multimedia displays, Missouri Western is offering a comprehensive course focusing on the historical events surrounding Walter Cronkite's life. Producer Jenny Swope and Christina Wade have the story. Yes, Cronkite, he would consider... President of the university, Dr. Bob Vardabedian, is currently offering a Saturday morning one-credit course on the history and impact of the late news anchor Walter Cronkite. The inspiration behind the class comes from the Walter Cronkite Memorial, built at Missouri Western to honor Cronkite, who was born here in St. Joseph, Missouri. Well, we have this, this wonderful facility, and we have access to so, so much good information about Walter through printed sources, through family members, through people who worked with him. It seemed logical that we'd want to put it all together into a, a course that uh, could be a kind of once-a-year course on the life and legacy of Walter Cronkite. The class, titled Walter Cronkite's Enduring Legacy, is taught by Vardabedian himself and is free and open to the public from September 6th to November 1st. And so we, we didn't want to discourage enrollment by charging for it, and we were very hopeful that a lot of people in the community would be interested in coming and might not be able to afford it. So we thought for the first time, let's just experiment, see how many people were interested, and offer it as a, as a free extension course. And it worked out pretty well. We have 31 people involved, some coming in person, some streaming it online. The class has brought in many community members of all ages excited to learn the history surrounding Cronkite's life. Well, I, I like history, so, and he was obviously like a big part of like Missouri history being from here. So I just thought I'd want to learn more about him since I didn't really know all that much because I, I didn't grow up with him, obviously. So I just wanted to learn more about him. For most of us who are my age, we relived the Kennedy assassination, the moon landing. Uh, we remember where we were at that time. It was the kind of thing that we remember well. And 
the, and, and we remember, I remember Walter Cronkite's voice. I remember the influence that he had on the public, American public at that time. Bardabedian has brought in several guest speakers over the last few weeks, such as resident artist Eric Fuson, and plans to have more to come. And then today we had Eric Fuson, who is kind of one of the major artistic forces, I think the major artistic force behind the memorial, come in and talk about his dealings with creating things for the memorial as well as dealing with the Cronkite family. In the future, we're going to have Cronkite's chief of staff next week, Marlene Adler, who was Cronkite's right-hand person for nearly the last 20 years of his life. Dr. Bartabedian, he keeps it really interesting with the guest speakers, and he has, you know, he just, he just keeps it fun. He's not like a boring teacher. Bartabedian so. hopes students leave with an understanding and appreciation for the impact that Cronkite had on history. Uh, so far, I've enjoyed it a lot, a lot more than I expected. Um, I've been learning a ton and enjoying getting to hear from people who uh, are familiar with the Cronkite family and uh, the people who, who were close to Cronkite and to hear from those guest speakers as well has been great. I think the history that he was involved with is extremely important to a truly educated citizen of the United States. I would uh, tell everybody I know, come, come, come. It's wonderful. If you would like to enroll, be on the lookout for signups for fall 2015. For more information on Walter Cronkite's enduring legacy, you can contact Western Institute located in Sprout 105. Well, that's our show. I hope you have enjoyed our look at the people, places, and events at Missouri Western. We at Griffin Update want to thank you for watching and hope you join us in the future as we explore Missouri Western and the surrounding region.